All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. We are going to talk about um, an anime called uh, Scryad. Uh, Biogandam, you are the one who suggested it. Uh, how did you come across uh, Scryad, if you remember? Yeah, so this this was like probably like 10... This was a long... This was about almost like a decade ago, but basically during when I was first getting into anime, th this is what half these stories are going to be like when I introduce shit, is like I was first getting into anime, right? And... Mm -hmm. You know, you know, scrolling and shit like that for YouTube because, you know, this was back when YouTube was fun. Um, and I came across this anime called Scryad. Like, I saw the, you know, I was like, okay, I, I was like, because I saw a thumbnail or a picture of it. I'm just like, oh, this looks interesting. There's a guy in the wasteland and there's like, you know, he's got some sort of mecha arm. I, I, I had no clue what the fuck it was, but I'm just like, you know, teenage me's like, oh, let's check this out. This looks interesting. Um, watched the first couple of episodes. I thought like, Oh, I quite like this. This is interesting. You know, they're, they're summoning like space mecha or something like that, and there's like some conflict in the, the you know this island. They're being taken over by some government faction. I'm like, yeah, I, I just keep watching it and watching it. I'm just like, I actually quite like this. It's pretty good. Like it was because it was kind it's... of one of those shows I kind of stumbled upon. I think it's common. No, you you are attracted by something in the aesthetic or. Some yeah. of the designs, and then you discover there is an interesting story behind, or even just a premise. Maybe it's just this premise sounds interesting. Let's check it out, and then yeah. it wins but, you over. Yeah, like my my girl reaction is I basically like I just randomly stumbled upon it, and I'm just like, "Well, I've never seen this before. What's this?" All right, like I was like, "Oh, this is actually pretty cool." <laughs> um, so yeah, like Please Teacher, and like some of the other shows that you know. So my earlier watches, like I kind of stumbled upon these things. I think it was, and it was, uh, it was quite time. a magical time. So um, this came out in two thousand and one. So you must have yeah. come across it uh, ten years um, later after it came out. Um, yeah, it was like all the episodes were on YouTube. I see. In oh. English, okay, so full episodes. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's when YouTube was fun. Uh, oh yeah, I remember I was able to watch all of. Uh, um, oh, there was a very good anime. Uh, it was good. The ending was a bit lame. Uh, I don't remember the title. Yeah, I, I watched. Uh, uh, yeah, it's one of those that the distributor was talking about in one of his streams. Uh, oh, I yeah. forgot. It's like steampunk. Uh, mm -hmm. Two factions, and there is a faction that pro that says to be neutral, but it's the one providing the. Um, the engines for their machines. Uh, Last Exile. There it is. I remember watching it on YouTube, and it was quite good. Mm. Nice, nice. Um, I think, yeah, I I've also watched some anime, I think, on YouTube. Uh, I think I watched most of Ratsephone back in the day. So, uh, so this was around... The so, uh, by the way, there's a movie as well, uh, a scribe, um a movie. Yeah. Uh, S since we're talking about it, this is one of the first digital anime ever done by Sunrise. Like, you, you look through their catalog, this is one of the first they ever did. This is the first that this internal studio for Sunrise ever did. And I'll premise this with the fact that I really like the show. But, oh boy, do you notice this in the first episodes of this show. Yeah, the animation, the character designs are not exactly what I describe as on model. At times, it can start to resemble children's scribbles. <laughs> oh, is, is it that bad? <laughs> I speak uh, of someone yeah, like. It is. It's, it, okay. like it's, there, there's a yeah, like here's the thing, like. There, there's some aspects about where it's a bit off model and on model. Like you can definitely tell that this animation wise was definitely a diamond in the rough. Mm. Um, and it, since we're talking about like the animation of it, if you look oh, look at like the manga, um, the manga has like this really cool like kind of punk yeah. kind of aesthetic. Like, it, it's I like, saw it. I saw the yeah. images you posted. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's like first the North Star. And Gundam exactly. or something like yeah, Get a Robo Hit a Baby Triad came out of with it. With those very, very thick outlines and those very strong yellow scuros on the characters. 
and a kind of angular edge in the real sense of the word. Yeah. Design like, like the yeah the manga see, like the like it, it it seems like the digital animation at the time probably couldn't capture the the punk style that the manga had. And I, I was talking to this Heraculous before and like ba basically in DMs before, but I kind of feel like you know they were kind of backed into a corner and they had to go for this more like sterile, esoteric, you know, sci-fi kind of feel. Because mm -hmm. if you look at like the setting itself, like a lot, a lot of the areas, it's like a lot of ruined city and like like a lot of wasteland, and it's kind of, it kind of gives you like that Fallout kind of feeling, like everything is barren and shit like that. Like it definitely, like the anime isn't punk, but it definitely has this kind of like eerie wasteland, sterile feeling to it, and it's and it definitely. Something the anime yeah. definitely leads more into like the sci-fi esoteric shit, especially when it comes to like the altars and the the power system, all that crap. Um, I'm done, so continue. Right. Um. So I uh, I guess um. So I I guess the premise um uh, the premise of the story is that uh, um something happened uh, around twenty years ago or something uh and. Uh, uh, a, a prefecture or a, or a region of Japan yes. is um, um, basically becomes an island. Like there's a huge earthquake or something, and it be becomes an island. And, and the people on on that uh, uh, prefecture island or whatever, which gets called uh, the lost ground, um, yeah. around one percent of the people who are born there um, get uh, these uh, powers called uh, altars. Which um basically they can summon a, a mech or something. It's, would you describe it that way? They can. Uh, they have different superpowers. Sometimes it involves summoning a mech. Sometimes it involves uh just arms. Sometimes they have floating these floating weird energy balls. Sometimes they're super speedy. Uh, it can manifest in all sorts of different directions and different ways. They're basically just superpowers. Um, yeah, but now, the, the most common ones are like the metal ones. Like th that's the most common you're gonna see is the ones you know that are metallic. I mean, there's a couple of them that take on more of an organic quality, but for the most part, altars are like think of like imagine stands, but as mechas. From like imagine nice. stands from JoJo, but more is like mechas. <laughs> it's uh, interesting. Uh, it reminds me a little bit that this, but the outlines, of course, with a Japanese aesthetic, but something in between a uh, roadside picnic and escape from New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and, and also, the really interesting thing about the ultra powers when they activate them, they start like literally absorbing matter. From like the water around them, like literally when they take their older powers, you see like chunks of the ground being like blown apart. Nice. So uh, I'll be yeah. back, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, talk among yourselves. Uh, I'll be back. <laughs> All right. Anyways, the plot, the general plot of this, the setup is you have part of Kanagawa Prefecture broke off some twenty years ago. The whole area is turned basically for the worse. The vast majority of it is run by various gangs and warlords. Uh, development is at a very low level, mostly just sustenance farming. Uh, and people and like small able, communities. Small communities, mm. people barely eking out of survival. In the center is the one city protected by walls, protected by an organization called Holy. And Holy wishes to subjugate all of the island. They are staffed by various uh, alter users who have chosen to get in with the system. And they want to pacify the whole region and bring it into compliance, partially with their own views and partially compliance with what mainland Japan wants to happen. Uh, and their method of bringing about compliance usually involves forcing people into work camps and shooting them if they start to resist. <laughs> I see. Again, what, what a great way to ingratiate, ingratiate yourself with a, with a group of people that become separate from the mainland 
And obviously, you've got these these gangs and warlords running around. You know, surely, you know, they're not going to do anything about it. Oh, wait, they are. Hmm. To the point... Like, it reminds me a little bit again of uh, like we were talking about not long ago, Feast of the North Star with this idea of I don't know, has a little bit of that vibe, or is just the it, impression? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 yeah. Is, it is quite. Yeah, it has that vibe because it's interesting thing you bring up that bring up that because I was talking this to me and Heraclius, but like Scryad kind of has like this natural law versus. I'm going to butcher this, but, you know, legal positive and, like, conflict to it. Because the the main, co- like, basically, the people of Holy, they're like, you know, you have to come back in the system. We will be, we will, we all will be, will be, we will, we all will be equal under the system and, and, and all, and order and shit like that. And, like, the main character, Cosma, is like, you know, that's not equality. That's what it's like to look down others. Because maybe, maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, but you, you there's definitely, like, this conflict between those who are more into natural law and those who are like, you know, into the legal positivism shit, which is the opposite of natural yeah. law. And mm. and this conflict is especially brought to the head with main character Kazuma or the other main character, Ryu Ryuho. Ry Ryuho, did I say Ryuho Ryuho Ryuho. Yes. Ryuho. Ryuho. Yeah. yes. And um, as you can tell by the thumbnail that I'm that I whipped up in GIMP. Um, both both these two characters kind of represent two different things. They're polar opposites, and only one can only one will only one will win. Yeah, and yes, basically, what kind of starts out is like you know Kazuma sticking it to the man, the rage um, rage against the machine. Basically, kickstarts this giant conflict between these conflicting gangs and warlords against the the mainland government, and then all sorts of crazy shit happens in between. So that's kind of the, the that's kind of the premise. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. The, the opening episodes have uh, Kazuma gets kidnapped by Holy, gets brought in, and the the first uh, thing that happens is they have uh, Kazuma at this trial, and they say, "Oh, you're a class two offender." We. Oh, we could stick you in jail for life without parole, or you could join Holy. And Kazuma's like, just, just screw that. I want to see the guy who fought with me uh, and brought me in. I want to fight him again. And these people are a little perplexed, but eventually Yuho does come in. He fights him again, and Yuho is, of course, like completely disgusted. He has this view of we have to bring law and order, and he, I guess you could say he's more oppressed compared to someone like Kazuma. He doesn't enjoy openly engaging in his, in any love of battle or anything like that, and so he looks upon Kazuma as sort of this barbarian. Uh, mm. Luckily for the plot, uh, Yuho's childhood friend and I. And uh, big idealist Momoi Kiryu, who's uh, just sort of joined Holy in an advisory role, uh, feels sorry for Kazuma and immediately decides to basically just open the the door to his cell afterwards. Kiryu is uh, afterwards uh, Kazuma is able to get out. Hmm. And, and the rest of yeah, the... Yeah, because the, 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 the interesting thing of the Cosmo situation is they're being extra hard on him. Because basically, they're like, yeah, throw him in the tank again. Like, we'll just keep throwing the book at him until he breaks. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, it's like, we've tried everything. This is not fucking working. And, you know, she sues this. Is, this is unnecessary. Cool, and it is the thing. I think she deep down sees virtue in Cosmo. Because, yeah, he is a bit of a, a savage barbarian. But, you know, he's sticking to his guns. Mm-hmm. He's not letting she all this re- techno she can, respect, she can respect uh, his stoicism and how he doesn't want to give up on his views, let's say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I, I think, like, unlike Ry- Ryuho, she sees virtue in Kazuma. And this is a reoccurring theme that happens about, about probably for the first half of the show, around the first half of the show, is that they'll meet each other again and she sees more, um, we won't get into that right now, but, you know, she sees a bit more of the virtue 
and what Kazuma represents and realizes that the way that Holy and Ryuho's handling things may not actually be the best way to handle the stuff. Let's say that, he's, like, he's more like it's outwardly a barbarian, but there is something good inside where the, the other faction is more like the inverse. They look like they are the um, good guys. They, they, they portray themselves as the guys who want to bring order, etc. But they are yep. barbaric. Only they they put on a, a bit of pretense. Something yes. like that. Yeah. And I mean, you, the show tries to make you feel somewhat for uh, holy because I mean, this is Japan, and Japan naturally always wants to go with the side of order. Uh, the nail that sticks out gets hammered. Nail, yeah, so yeah, that, that, that type of the stuff. Same. But but that said, when you have a guy who has like a giant gun pistol and is threatening guys around. Uh, threatening to shoot them all basically out of his personal pleasure. It's mm-hmm. kind of ba- kind of hard to relate. Now it is does make it pretty clear that these are bad apples. These are undoubtedly mm-hmm. bad apples. <laughs> that said, Holy is not seems to be just taking an example of eh, throw shit at the wall and bring people in. Why not? It's a little bit Machiavellian, let's put it this way. It's not, uh, if you need to achieve something, sometimes you need to be ready to trample onto other people's uh, affairs or lives to achieve that. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I'm back. So, I guess um, this is an anime mostly about a a rivalry, but um, I I kind of feel like... um, the rival, like uh, halfway through, um, the rivalry is resolved. Yes. Yeah. And, More or less. Yeah. And, yeah, and then it becomes essentially a shonen team up show. Yes. So a little bit like Gilgamesh and Endiru. <laughs> Enkidu, Enkidu, yeah, you could uh, say that. Um, in, in a way, yeah, yeah because they can't. Because here's the thing, they do have like the final fight at the end to like resolve things, but like at that point, like it's it's the it's less they hate each other, it's more like they they have respect for one another. Yeah, you know, they, they... this is uh it's something that I find in very in many storylines. I don't know in, in Japanese, but in Japanese um either anime, manga, or even video games. Yeah, Japan really, really likes the whole thing of like these two absolute rivals that just don't get along but coming uh, together for yeah mm-hmm. I, 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 to mean, an East, I mean in East Asian yeah. yeah sorry um in East Asian literature there is like the trope of like you know former enemies becoming friends like battle shown yeah it is a good trope like here's the thing battle shown is infamous for that shit you know like Yu Hakusho um with Hie Dragon Ball Z with Fujita. Mm-hmm. You know, no, that is a... Tr- or um, Naruto with, you know, Nine-Tailed Fox or, you know, shit like that. Like, that is a trope that does come up in quite a lot of Eastern literature is, is former enemies yeah. becoming friends. Or even video games. Oh, yeah, video games too. Knuckles in Sonic the Hedgehog or if you ever played Boktai, the main character and uh, his main enemy... One of his main enemies... They become a lie towards the end, at the very end, but still, it's the usual now fighting on your side because there is much more at risk. Yeah. That I was expecting. And, then, and that's actually quite the interesting thing about Kazuma and Riho's relationship is they, I would, I would say both those characters are really well fleshed out, and I, and I think they build up the rivalry very quickly. Like, they have, like, especially when, you know, Kazuma escapes, like, Riho, you know, when they when they have a little, little scrap again in the building, um, Ryuho like gets damaged. He's like, I'll have to remember his name this time because this time he isn't aiming wildly. He's he's focusing mm-hmm. because you know it's like iron sharpens iron. Like both of them basically they become motivation for each other to get become stronger because because yeah, Ka- that- yeah because Ryuho's is okay. This this fucking random barbarian dude I fit, met in the woods. He's not just a, he's just not another savage I can put down. He's more than that, and I'm gonna remember his name, and I'm gonna fight him, and we're gonna have a reckoning. And you know, for the first 
decent chunk of the anime it it, it really is just kazuma going through you know holy mooks number five and number 20 all right yeah you know uh, to a certain degree it's uh semi-episodic and it sort of gives you a very good feel for all of the scenario and, and like what the setting is like so People it's it's sides. able to balance it's able to balance the drama of the individual storylines with the broader let's say yep. environment around it i like yeah. when they when are able to do that when they can explore both the yeah. characters and the world around them and the reasons why yeah we we, we should probably go into details that cosmo is like a mercenary and he like here's the thing he's not mercenary is too mercenary i think is too strong a word what he is is he's a random guy who will get hired well, the, the, for the, the odd jobs the synopsis, the, yeah the synopsis describes him as a mercenary but it's just like yeah you know, but like at the beginning he isn't like actively fighting holy right that doesn't happen until later on but like like he just kind of gets involved like in fighting mm -hmm. them um and then it's like as holy steps up because like you know this kazuma guy is fucking us up and like we need to you know if there are more people who are just as strong as him well we need to get the shun to control and i i guess around the first half around the couple episodes around this first half is when the show gets really interesting because the altar users are like okay these people are hot because the, the holy people do their big push right um and the holy the uh altar native they call native altar users that are still left they're like look look these people prove an absolute threat to our island they prove a threat to our home they're gonna fucking conquer and enslave us and we must do something and um it doesn't go well for those people most of them either get captured die or um worse <laughs> and and here's the thing, Karzma doesn't come out, um, out, out scathe too. Like, for example, his, um... So, they're not, not his little sister, but, like, his ward that he looks after. Like, she gets sick and he needs medicine, so he, like, raids a medicine truck. Which, which I think mm -hmm. is what helped kickstart's holy invasion in the first place. And then there's, um, his best friend that, um, basically, um, who bleeds out to death. As well yeah, and dies. Well, well we, we should have mentioned talked more about Chris Akabe before we mentioned that he just dies. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> I mean this whole podcast is full of spoilers. But yeah, what what's really cool He's about dying. it is like it kinda of starts off episodic and as the show gets on, like it just has these very like really serious moments. It's like, oh god, like they're not fucking around. That's good. Yeah. I like some gravitas. So I, I guess an, another thing which I wanted to brought, brought, uh, bring up about the, about the rivalry is um, did you feel like um, Ryuho um, turned into basically just another Kazuma after um, the rivalry? No. no. You don't think so? No. Um, so because, I mean, the, the, the way that I saw that, that he was differentiating himself is that uh, uh, he has rules uh, and, um, yeah, he, He's on the side of the law or something, and and then K Kazuma, um, when they meet up together after the whole amnesia and nonsense, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, when they meet up uh, back to together, Kazuma says to Ryo, Ryo that uh, you know we are peace in a pod or whatever that uh, we are basically the same. The only difference is that uh, you you say that you have some rules, but uh, you do whatever you want to, just like me. Or, or do you, or do you th think that's just a Kazuma? That was just Kazuma teasing. No, um, that, that's it's Kazuma taking the piss out of him. Um, like so, here's, the, yeah. here's the thing. Like at the end of the yeah. show, like yeah, yeah, like at the end of the show, yeah. Um, Riho does kind of go through like the wall, go for the warlord route, same as Kazuma, because you get the impression mm. that basically just him and Kazuma have basically taken over the rest of the lo like the lost ground and they're basically like civilizing it um like one chunk of the time but he here's the thing he's do like here's the thing it's the motivations like why he is doing it for justice but it's his own justice mm. yeah because here's, 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 here's the thing here's the thing like the lawful good paladin will fight for the rebels if the ruler is an evil tyrant yeah yeah. Because the goal of the lawful, because the goal of the lawful good paladin is society is good. You you know you, um, so, you must 
p p do goodness, you know, you must follow the law and be good citizens. But if the tyr if but if the if the government is led by a tyrant and the law is cr is is hurting people and it's being corrupted, then that is mm -hmm. bad. And as the lawful good paladin, I will assist the rebels so we can restore order. Yeah, yeah that's because, pretty because, much yeah. also what Saint Paul says in some of his letters. Yeah, ca cause ruled by. Sorry, the first. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Kazuma, by contrast, is sort of the character who would just be content to be left alone uh, and, and do his little thing and uh, sort of enjoy fighting. He has a little bit of a complex over the fact that he feels that the only thing he can do is that, that the only thing he's good for is jobs that involve using his powers. Uh, but so is he more like a true neutral, slightly chaotic neutral kind of guy yeah yeah and uh basically the fact that holy keep sticking their nose in and keep causing trouble for the surrounding area and uh his uh yeah you you have uh, his uh almost little sister but it's really just like sort of his adopted sister i guess you could say uh he can't stand that and it usually galvanizes him, who otherwise wouldn't get involved in such things, but still would enjoy fighting a lot, mm. into fighting wholly. In a sense, it's like, don't tread on me. Yes, and because, very much yeah. so. What did you think of uh, the final villain? Uh, did you feel like... Um, very uh, boring, weak. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, uh, same with you. Is, it, is it just me or many anime uh, and manga always fall flat when it comes well, to the final and not all of them but many well, well it's I want to get me wrong well I want to get through the full first half before we start talking about the second half yeah uh, like honestly I kind of blew the load because it's just like you guys kept me going and shit but like um let's just keep going for the first half for net for now um, so... Yeah, the f the first half will introduce all those characters. One of the big points of conflict you have is between uh, Mimori and uh, Yuho. Now, Mimori Kiryu is a old childhood friend of Yuho. Uh, they, they keep flashing back to the scene where they met uh, back when they were children. Uh, and back then, Ryuho was like this very shy kid who who felt really kind of bad about the fact that he even had powers, and he was very shy about that. But uh, Mimoy openly accepted that, and she took this little pendant, uh, carved out of like a little rock of Ryuho's uh, ability. And, and she like apparently treasures that and is still wearing it when she gets there. And when she arrives at the island, she is shocked to know, oh, okay, this Yu Yuho is working for them. And she's shocked to see that Yuho has turned entirely into this very brooding guy who doesn't really open up to anyone and is... Pure lawgiver, pure, I want you, this is my job, I'm going to do my job. And, and I expect all of you to follow uh, the initiative of what I have to do for this job. It, and she she's sort of shocked that he's turned into such a cold, uh, in her opinion, maybe bordering on evil person. Hmm. I, That's an interesting. I, I, I will admit that before, like his character development in the second half, he's he's like lawful neutral, bordering on like lawful evil. Yes. Okay. Very much so. Like the one of the first things he does when you bring in uh, that like he will just like savagely beat Kazuma uh, <laughs> and shit like that, and, and he'll like. Not like directly, directly approve of some of the 
Well, for example, like Kazuma was brought in on a charge of basically nothing, and they were forcing him onto life in prison. They literally refer to him as NP3228. They call him that the whole time. They don't give him a name. And Kaz and uh, you was like, yeah, this is the system. This is how things should be. And uh, obviously, Mimoy being the uh, humanitarian, yeah, the stand-in humanitarian liberal intellectual that's actually serious about it. Uh, she she comes in and is like horrified by all this. Like you're literally treating people as numbers. Yeah, and, and I think what makes it worse is that, like, you know, Kazuma's getting extra beatings. He's getting extra time in the spinny jail. Like, and, and she like, and she basically says to him, like, is, aren't you being unnecessarily cruel to this man? Like, aren't you being unnecessarily cruel? Why is he getting special treatment of this? Like, why do you keep doing this? Yeah, and I think Ryuho is basically like, oh, that's just the way the system is. Uh, no, I think, uh, I think he's, he's more like, uh, you know, like, because he, 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 I guess the point of Holy is that... Um, so basically, you have these superhumans who can do harm to people and will do so, um, as as is shown, like uh, yes, the series, like they basically can can do whatever whatever the fuck they want to to normal humans. So yeah, yeah. Um, so because of that, they need to be extra harsh and not to have any mercy. Yes, Yuho gi gives a lecture to. Uh, to uh, Mimoy on just that, where he he takes it from the perspective of what about all the victims? What about all the people that have died because I haven't been harsh enough? Because I haven't been bringing them all in. He's mm. got some. He's got something of a point because no, it's true. I like l l listen in his defense. Quite a, a lot of alter users are kind of warlordish, involved in gangs. A lot. So I'd say like. <laughs> I'd say when it comes to alter users, there's like people, uh, people that work for Holy. There's warlords, and then there's about two other people, including Kazuma, that aren't fucking warlords. <laughs> well, I'm not, not, yeah, they're the people who fight the warlords. Nice, I'm not talking nice warlords. I'm talking, my guys Back beat time, you up. Yeah. Ah. Well, if you had such a power, I do believe most people would end up like this. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, but there is just a kind of like that is kind of like the yeah, but that is just kind of like that just kind of comes off the territory. Like you're, you know, you know, if you're this ultra powerful guy, people are going to be attracted there, and it's like you know, it's like yeah, no shit, people come become warlords, like no shit. Uh, mm. And also, but um, I guess p people like Memory would say, well, uh, the reason why they become like that is because. Uh, they have no choice because uh, or society, like, uh, or if, if you if you are an alter, then you will be treated differently or whatever. Like you can, you can't get any any other work, um, other than I can see that be, being a fighter of some kind. But then yeah, that's a it's... sort of determinism, isn't it? Like, I mean, I, I guess what they are saying, what people like the the memory type, I guess, would say is that, uh, oh well. Um, we can work around it or whatever, like, but the problem is the discrimination or whatever against uh, the alter users who are put into human experimentation and whatnot, uh, whatever, because people are afraid of them, essentially. And Yeah, inside the city, alter users are feared. Uh, you could say quite they're rationally. They're dogs on a leash. Yeah, they're... Or wolves they're... on a leash. Yeah, they're wolves on a leash. Yeah, it would make sense. Yeah, quite rationally, because any one of these people could just blow up their society uh, inside the city, inside the walls. Mm -hmm. um, in I mean, I mean Kazuma did exactly that. Like, he blew a massive hole through one of the fucking front gates as he was escaping, so... I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and sort of the outside of the island, I'd say that there's not really that prejudice there, because... <laughs> You, you're most, you're probably serving one of these people. Um, by the way, Snob gave it a 4 out of 10. Uh, oh yeah, Snob, sh snob shit taste. What? <laughs> who's again at That's 11? Um, uh, yeah, but um, speaking about the society shit, um, 
The, the really, I, I, I'm paraphrasing, but I remember the discussion. It was with the bald guy. I forget his name. But they're talking about, like, listen, Holy will make you equal and shit like that. And Cosmo says to him, he's like, no, that's not equality. That's just looking down on others. And I thought that was a really interesting discussion where they were talking about, like, because he's like, that dude there kind of was drinking the Kool-Aid. Like, he's like, L listen, this is for your own good because, you know, you'll be part of society. You'll all be equal and stuff like that. And Cosmo turns around and says to him, like, no, that's not equality. That's just you looking down on others and, and treating mm -hmm. them differently. Because because Cosmo says to himself, like, he's not, he will never belong in that city. That's just not who he is. No. Yeah. And, and it's kind of and it's and it's kind of interesting that the the guy from Holy he's like, ha. Huh. I yeah I think uh, Kazuma uh, he uh, he tells uh, Rio I think or somebody else that um, he did go to the city um, for a while before all this happened, and um, like he, he saw all the people like uh, going about their work, being happy or whatever, smiling or whatever, uh, being equal or or, or something. Uh, you know, like uh, some kind of um, being equally happy or whatever, not being normal people. Or whatever. Yeah, because exactly, normal. It's also, exactly. That's the thing. What do we What do we mean here? It's a question of terminology. Yeah, he, he's, sense. Uh, he, 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 so basically, he but, but uh, he rejected this because, uh, well, uh, he 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 wanted to be better in some way, like, uh, and also because he felt like. Uh, um, like like there was some condescension condescension um in terms of uh, or like uh, oh you're going to decide for me uh what what's good for me uh, mm -hmm. or because uh, so basically Rio was saying that uh, the, the, like he he needs to uh, have order for people to be happy and equal and and whatever more or less uh, rather than a bunch of warlords. Uh, uh, bullying people essentially, um, a, a bunch of superhumans essentially uh, bullying people, and uh, um, Kazuma kind of um, rejects uh, this uh, happiness civilization or whatever, um, in, mm -hmm. in, in a sense. Um, again, because it feels like uh, they're, they're, it, it's it's condescending to tell him, uh, um, like, uh, if, if like what is good for him essentially um if you well it, it's also that he finds the city life sterile he, he makes a comment that they're all equally happy all equally having the same mild happiness essentially <sighs> and, and, and that Without everything extremes. is mild everything is very placid yeah no extremes and there is no there is no sorrow but there is also no real joy Exactly. Yes. And he just can't get along with that. He can't relate to that at all. So that's another reason why he just doesn't want to be involved. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, instead, like most of the episodes, he hangs out with himself and his uh, friend, I was getting the name wrong, uh, Kimi Kimishima. Kimishima, and, yeah. Yeah. Kamishima is sort of like the laid-back type who uh, who's uh, Kazuma's best friend. He looks after him. He's the go-between that always gets a job set up for them. Hmm. And he, he doesn't uh, have any altar. Uh, I think that's a... Yeah. yeah no, he's he a normal no, guy. He has no altar powers. And there's something of a running thing with him where he feels... He oftentimes feels like he should do something more, like he should stand up the way uh, Kazuma does. But at the end of the day, he doesn't have altar powers, and he's and he's scared. He's just, he's just guy number five. He's just regular. <laughs> he's just regular Joe number five. And basically, when he he does stand up, uh, he basically ends up uh, getting killed. Essentially. Oh. Um, yeah, and, and we. we 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 keep spoiling that, but since since we're back to it, I'm going to describe it like it's this really great scene where, like they 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 kidnap uh, what's essentially Kazuma's little sister, and they're trying to hold him as leverage in order to get Kazuma in, uh, and it's Kabishima who just breaks in. Uh, who 
like he's just standing right there, grabs her from like the guards at gunpoint and like steals a car, just drives off with her. And there's all this gunfire shooting back. You don't, st and uh, he manages to drive out uh, uh, to Ka uh, Kazuma and gives him like the edge in terms of like aiming and whatnot in order to beat off uh, the latest goons from Holy, which are these sort of like weird smoke dudes uh, that seem to be endless and won't. Uh, and won't die, and he ends up revealing, hey, it's just like this one guy in the corner that's uh, <laughs> controlling them all. You have to take care of him first. And so Cosmo takes care of that. But, uh, and Kamishima just goes, hey, I'm tired. You you take over. And uh, I'll lay on your back a little well, well, while we walk home, since you destroyed my car, as you always do, and that is a running thing that that Kasuma is always like destroying his car, mm -hmm. and they walk back, and all of a sudden, towards the end of the at the end of the episode, like the, s the sun is going down, and Kamisha is not moving. He's uh, and Cosmo's like, Oi, oi, what what are you doing? Why why aren't you talking to me? What what's this all about? Hey, stop joking around. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. And like hmm. reminds me a little bit of that scene from uh All Quiet on the Western Front. Mm -hmm. And it's especially but... imp Oh, okay. Yeah, you go go ahead if you were still going to keep talking on all quiet. No, 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 finish. Go go ahead first. Okay, what makes it especially impactful is the fact that you never see Kamishima get shot. You never see any point where, like, he's actually been injured or anything like that. You basically just have to infer it afterwards. I, I think, and so it. I think, it, and so it. You, you do comes it, as like a total surprise. I don't know. It didn't come as a. I, I don't know. Like, um, I, to me, it seemed obvious that he got shot uh, on the way there. Um, Maybe it's one of those situations where you're like, you're like hoping it didn't happen. It's like no, no, it's just tired and that's it. Well, what and about yeah? Back. There's there's yeah. a scene where a whole bunch of bullets are flying by the car, but I didn't see any scene of him like reacting to getting shot or anything I, like that. Well, they say that when adrenaline kicks in, sometimes you don't feel the pain. So, mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, I, I mean, I, I remember him being shocked. Uh, um, I don't know. Maybe what about you, Bal uh, Gundam? Do you remember seeing that? Um. I, I do remember like the scene before when he was speaking up for Kazuma because it's like they they basically telegraph Kazuma's fight against these smoke dudes and you know he stands up and he says like no Kazuma's not the bad guy look he's fighting for all of you and you and you and you and you he's fighting for your freedoms can't you see what he's fighting for and the holy guys try and beat him down I wouldn't be surprised if like he got a stray bullet somewhere that like hit close to an artery or like as he's driving away. Like, it could be yeah. that, like, a straight... Like, here's the thing. It, like, his hit with both... Um, it may have not, like, been a direct shot, but it could have been a wound that, you know, as he was moving and running with Kazuma, it got worse, opened up, and it yeah, basically went does. out. Yeah, that was always my uh, interpretation of it, yeah. And, yeah, that itself is a good scene. Uh, what you were talking about earlier, where they whole... <laughs> well, where... where Basically, Holy started a fight with uh, Kasuma, and they're playing it on a big screen for the uh, for the people of the outside, the outsiders, I believe they're called, and uh, and they were just going, "Oh, how horrible! How horrible these wild altar users are! <laughs> so scary!" And Kimishima just goes nuts because he knows this person and he knows that these people are making these judgments off of just whatever Holy's telling them and that they don't know the context at all. And this mm -hmm. is in the context of like the Holy people with guns like forcing them to watch and shit like that. <laughs> like these are not nice people. 
Yeah. Uh, so, I guess. Uh, what about the choreography? Did you feel like uh, the battle choreography was anything to talk about, or did you feel like it was, uh, you know, the it's all right? Mm. Serviceable. Yes, yeah, serviceable. Uh, what, 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 I, I mean, I, I I like the the thing where like he goes like shocking second bullet, and you know he goes like really fast and goes for a big giant massive uppercut. Like it, it's serviceable. Like it's nothing great, but you know yeah. it gets the point it's across. Like these are people with superpowers, yeah. and they're gonna smash the shit out of each other. <laughs> yeah, but what? Yeah, go on. What, what's really great is uh, after Gimishima dies. Kazuma gets goes like full ape shit. He is done with Holy. Like he 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 cries his heart out like at the end of the episode, and then in the next episode, he goes Super Saiyan or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he 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 makes amends. Uh, there there's this like scene actually at the start of the first episode where he like <laughs> is talking with uh, Kimishima. Uh, and it's just Kamishima's body there in his in his car, and uh, Ka- Kazuma's talking to him like he's still there. He's making amends, and he just walks off, and he starts destroying every holy convoy that he can find, and saying, "Where the hell is Ryuho? I want to fight him." And and- uh, there's there's also another important thing in that scene too, because as he's walking away, he takes some um, his gun, right, and he says like, "I'll take this as payment. You don't worry, don't worry, but I'll get the job done." Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because it was a running thing of uh, they like split uh, uh, they split the earnings between themselves on whatever jobs they took. Mm. Yeah. And um and, and and speaking of that fight with Ryuho, that gun does come up again when he uses it to activate. Um, so alters like stands can evolve and take different forms. And my favorite scene of that was he fighting Ryuho. He's like, all right, he calls out his friend's name. He's like, all right, tosses the gun up. It uh, destroy, you know, gets destroyed, and it forms like his second alter. And he's going like, shine brighter and brighter and brighter, shell bullet. Hmm. And I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice scene, and what this eventually leads to is he just starts like destroying everything holy related, and puts uh the girl that has like a hopeless crush, the the holy girl shares a Johnny, who who we later learn uh was basically saved from almost death by Yuho. And so she naturally has, despite putting on like an allure, being like a sophisticated girl who's like not tied down to anyone in particular, she really, really has a thing for Ryuho. So we don't. And Ryuho, being the dark brooding type, just sort of yeah. lets her pal around and ignores it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I he's too it... he's too busy being the Byronic hero brewing in the corner. He has no he has no <laughs> time for woman. Be gone. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess it's uh... he, he has he has two women, both her and the childhood friend, that are both like throwing himself at him, and he's just going, mm. nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and I guess... interfere with my brooding time. Yeah, I guess Ka- got stuff to do. <laughs> Yes, and I guess Kazu, Kazuma is also kind of like that with, uh, I don't know, his uh, his not sister or something. Um, we don't really see, do we really see Kazuma killing people when he goes berserk? I mean, obviously some people must have died. They uh, don't directly show it, but you can infer because of the fact that he's blowing this shit up that there's no way a lot of those people didn't die. Uh, yeah. They're explicit not to show like any like actual deaths, but it it's, it's implied. It's very much implied. Makes yeah. sense. O- only the main. Like, like here's the thing. Like here's the thing. Before this, like yeah, he would beat the shit out of them. But you know, they'll just be in hospital. They're not dead. Worst yeah. case, maybe, maybe, maybe a coma, right? But you know, he wasn't outright killing these guys. Though no, after yeah. his friend dies, it's like. No, he is just, he is enraged. He's like, how far, like, it's basically the kid gloves have come off. 
Mm-hmm. All he's out for off. blood. He's out for blood. Uh, and he's got, like, Sherris there, like, on the ground. And he doesn't exactly intend to kill her or anything. But, like, Ryuho shows up and is like, You, what on earth are you doing to her? And, and, he, and I think he, like, even, like, calls out to him and, and like, uses uh, Sherris as bait to, to, like, get Ryuho out. And so Ryuho is just absolutely furious, absolutely not so that he would uh, threaten... Uh, threaten Sherris, and they they have this like standoff where they both are just like scream at each other, vanish from this land, vanish from my sight, and they have this super powerful battle with one another. They go absolutely nuts at one another. Viewho's black hair turns green for the purposes of being more dramatic. And it flying everywhere. So I, I guess... That- Reality is warping around them and everyone's like, oh my god, what the fuck is going on? And earthquakes are going on and massive shines of light and people are like, what the fuck is going on? And then the second impact, third impact happens. Yeah, and then all of a sudden CGI rainbow comes down and both of these characters who are in the middle of beating each other to the pulp just sort of like get transported to another land and see this strange visage of a mecha guy on uh, who's who's on fire with black fire yes speak, speak and of that's, it. speaking of it you uh, uh, yeah go on then uh, and the commander is like the commander of holy is like oh shit this is everything I've been trying to avoid. This is everything I've been trying to stop from happening. What have I done? So speaking of uh, mm-hmm. the, 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 the meta guy or whatever, so he's supposed to be like a representation of the old, uh, the other side or whatever. Is there any point to him other than basically handing out uh, power-ups? It's a plot, it's a, it's a pl- like the go- thing's a plot point because he's the thing, they even show, in the, they even say in the show, like the original altar user is on the other side, like mm-hmm. the the first altar user who because you because basically the thing is altars they come from an alternate world right and altar users can tap into that shit. Um, what that black thing rep- like what that altar represents, um, is not only just power ups but he's also he's an aspect of the other side. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, a part of me thinks that he's possibly the altar of like the first altar user. And, like, you know, well, that guy can't come to the physical world, so he uses his altar instead to travel in between. Yeah, the impression I got, and the impression it makes pretty clearly by the end, is that he's someone who is trapped on the other side. Uh, uh, he he comes from the other dimension, but he's gotten trapped sort of in between and closer towards this world. Yeah, and he's... Yeah, I think Kazuma kind of sends him back to that world or something at the end. Yeah, at, at the very end, yes. I think the worst episode by far is the one involving um, the villain called Unke, um, who is like, uh, I, I guess he, he's kind of like uh, Shakespeare in Fate Apocrypha. Yeah, yeah, I hated that fucking episode. It was so, like, out of left field, too. <laughs> yeah, he he like has the ability to basically write people. They they always have wacky abilities that are kind of interesting. And this one was like he, he can subtly nudge people uh towards like this script that he has of this is going to be your life. This is what you're going to do. And you're going to uh, and you're just going to like go along and like things. Uh, and there's this whole script he writes for Kazuma, where he like gets to know uh, Mimoy. Uh, he decides that he's going to join Holy. Uh, really, it's just sort of like to gain intel. But uh, but uh, they use this in order to like with uh, Unke to try and like make it for real. Uh, but obviously, with this being Kazuma, eventually. Although it takes longer than you might expect. He goes along with it for quite a while. Uh, eventually, it starts to grate on him and become artificial. Yeah, but basically, when he fights with uh, 
with Rio and uh, Rio. Doesn't, yeah, that's doesn't, what does it. That, that's well, a, well, he's not strong enough. Doesn't fight back. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, that doesn't fight back hard enough against uh, against Kazuma. Kazuma realizes uh, well, this is just a fake. But, yeah, this isn't Ryuho. This is like an image. Um, by the way, is, is everything was everything fake? I mean, like, was it the actual characters? Uh, some of it's fake, some of it's not. Like, Mimoy was, like, legit following him around and stuff like that, and he was, like... But, like, for whatever reason, when they decide to, like, have them do a fight, uh, they, like, brought in... Uh, uh, it was, like, some sort of vision thing that they were doing. Yeah, I, I think uh, the most uh, interesting power, or I, I would say a, a very powerful, interesting one to me, anyway, was... Um, uh, Elian's one, so Elian could uh, he he worked for Holy, and he could like uh, I think his power his power was called uh, absolute perception or something. Yes, yeah. and uh, basically he could see anywhere, like uh, or, or, or locate. Um, yeah, he he could basically show broadcast anything happening uh, anywhere. So, uh, that yeah, was, and I- yeah. Yeah, another thing we should mention is that's one of the reasons that Holy can, like, police their own people is because he has that absolute perception where he can just, like, notice anyone. And uh, and then it's like three alter users can just come in, like, through nowhere and super fast and just grab people. Yeah. And, was, and, we, a- and we see... And the first example we see of that is when uh, Mimoy realizes... Uh, she was sort of like asking around, "Well, well, hey, they're t- they're all these weaker alter unions. They're being sent off the m- to the mainland to have something do done to them, and we don't know where on earth they're going or what's happening to them." And so she, and she does a little digging, and she acts. Uh, she eventually asks the uh, leader of them, Martin Zigmar, like. What's going on? What is this? He says, "Like, all oh, right, I, I reasonably trust you, so I'll, I'll give you the full details." The, uh, and we're not actually like shown them at that point, but you can pretty much get the idea that they're being experimented upon, and that's what's going on, and that hmm. is indeed what's going on. And she, like, being dumb, liberal, intellectual, goes immediately goes, "This is horrible. I'm going to take this to the press immediately." Uh, and Martin goes, "Like, I've been willing to endure you up until now, but I can't take your." naivete any longer, or something like that, and, like, immediately these people start jump out of nowhere and, and, like, grab her and drag her off to their internal prison. And, like, even the next episode, when she's writing in her diary, and she... uh, and she gets to the part where she's going to start describing what's going on, the people immediately... And and she's writing this for the sake of Kazuma and, and to describe what's going on with the people that get shipped off. And she just these people just appear out of nowhere and grab the diary and take it the moment she starts writing those details. Yeah, b- b- it, it, yeah. But basically, they have to cripple Elia Elian's uh, power uh, half of it, like uh, like when the last villain comes up, it basically has to cri- cripple his power because. Uh, Otherwise, uh, the commander can see anything that Mujo or whatever is doing. Right? Mu- yeah, Mujo Kyoji. Um, let's see. I, unfortunately, he uh, Alien wasn't really uh, such an interesting character in himself. I thought. Uh, no, no. Yeah, he's he's a lot more passive. When it when it comes to the um, to those side characters, I would say in Holy, I would say the most interesting to me was. Uh, Oh, at least the coolest. Uh, anyway, it was uh, Straight Cougar. Oh, well, oh yeah. yeah, Straight Cougar's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he he has this thing. He talks super fast. He enjoy <laughs> he enjoys flirting uh, with uh, Mimoy, who he always calls Minoy. He never gets people's names right. Um, and, and he has this aspect to him where <laughs> he's the cool guy that likes uh, flirting with people, but never seems to like. <laughs> Always seems to be a bit unlucky in that regard. Uh, he's hmm. super fast. 
Every he, he's all about speed. And, and, and speed. Uh, isn't he like the older brother of Kazuma, or like adopted older brother as well? I, 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 I never heard anything yeah, about that. Th th uh, that's like uh, apparently. Well, I mean, I guess he sort of starts to look after Kazuma towards the end a little. No, no, but even before that. Um, yeah, b before that, I think I think it's implied that uh, uh, Kazuma and Kuga knew each other, but it's not explained. Um, I, I mean, there was even a flashback like when he, you know, you know, before, like, you know, when he went to that forest thing, you know, to try and find more power. Like, there was even a flashback of straight Kuga basically telling him about that. It's like, oh yeah, you go to this older forest and get powers and shit. Oh, I see. And also, like, straight Kuga is a bit of a because here's the thing. Yeah, he's a member of Holy. But, like, he's a bit of a fucking wild card. He is a wild card. He does things his own way. He oh. breaks uh, when Rimori gets, uh, gets like, uh, put in jail. He's the one that breaks her out. And he's the only one who can break her out because he's literally too fast for Elian's system <laughs> to catch him. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> and uh, but when when the commander asks uh, Kuga on which whether he's on uh, humanity's side or our side, as in the older people's side, uh, he, he replies, uh, "My own." Yeah, that's a silly question. Like uh, I'm on my own side. Uh, that sounds like a good reply. It's such a chaotic, neutral thing. It's like, oh, you thought your hours were working for you, but no, nah, I'm I'm like running like twenty like side hustles at once. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think I'll have to go now, but. Yeah, but... Sounds like an interesting, interesting anime. I'll make sure. To check oh, it out. it's a good show of interesting themes. Like, yeah. Um. So okay. I... Yeah. See you guys. See you. So... Catch you later. Catch you later. Yeah. Um. I think. Well. It... Uh. Do we have to spoil the reason why why he's so fast, or do we? <laughs> oh, I mean, we can at this point. He got refined, like every. Like a lot of them, he got like experimented upon in the mainland, which they call refined. And the the end result of that is that you have a dramatically shortened life expectancy, especially as you use your powers. And, 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 I, I, and I guess sort of to make up for that, he I guess uh, he's trying to be fast at everything. Um, yeah. yeah, I see. Um, because he hasn't got much time left. I thought it was a nice touch. Um, yeah. Because, um, yeah, it basically fits, fits, his power fits in properly, uh, thematically, I guess. Yeah, because Absolutely. basically I think he mentioned is that, like, the reason why he got, like, refined is because he was hiding a lot of his actual true power from them, and they thought that he was, you know, his altar was weak, and they started to refine him, and he's like, well, you know, you know, I didn't reveal all my abilities, so they thought I was weak, and look, and I'm paying the price. Yeah, because yeah, go on, sorry. It's it's a throwaway line, but he does mention that, like, basically, yeah, I got refined because they thought I was a weak ultra user. Because he had missed this, like, he was hiding like a lot of his true powers. Yeah, and I think he also lands uh, the best insult against uh, Kyoji when uh, you know uh, Kyoji is like, uh, uh, you know, you're going to, you know, like uh, you're going to die, and he's like. Uh, of course I know. Uh, and then I think he calls uh, Kyoji a, a, a reptilian bastard or something. Uh, which Because he's kind of um, snake-faced or, or whatever. I thought that was nice. But... Well, well, just because he's like completely fucking uh, evil and I guess you could say somewhat inhuman in his desires. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but I mean like but, but... basically Kyoji was trying to scare Kuga or something like uh, yeah, and Kuga was like, of course I know uh, that uh, it's not going to last uh, much longer. I'm not going to last much longer. <laughs> but yeah, Kuga was already living life on the assumption that he could die at any moment. That's just the way he lived, and um, so he had to live. Yeah. Uh, so the reason why the commander went against um, uh, Rio, by the way, th that was just uh, to get him uh, to power up, essentially, right? Um, I don't think that. Yeah, I think that that's all there is to say to that. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and after the big battle between Yuho and Kazuma, we have a six-month time skip. Both characters, both main characters, are missing, presumed dead. 
Uh, in the meantime, the city has gone on. The, the city was like totally ripped up a lot, though not completely ruined by the dramatic, huge earthquakes that were caused by their battle. And Holy's whole mission has been set back a whole bunch. And as a result, the mainland, which previously gave Holy a lot of leverage and leeway to do what it wanted, the mainland Japan is starting to step in and go, no, nah, we're going to bring you in on a tighter leash. And the main guy for this is this ridiculous-looking man with white hair and sunglasses who is so stupid-looking, and his name is Mujo Kyoji. Yeah. And, uh, and like, Martin's Yeah, like, if he doesn't scream, if he doesn't scream villain to you, like, you haven't been paying attention to the show. So, um... Yeah, I, uh, speaking of... Uh, so, when, you, when we talk about the mainland, uh, obviously, we're talking about Japan, but uh, I remember that... Uh, like uh, the commander, for example, his first name is Martin or something. Uh, yes. And also, um, I, I, like back at a, at a party um, where memory was there, like uh, I think there was like a, a black American admiral or something. Um, I mean, mm. it, it, I guess it, I, I kind of felt like it was implied that uh, even though it's part of Japan, like uh, other countries have a say. Or whatever about whatever. That's that's quite possible. Yeah, I mean, this is the type of thing where you, it would be like an international concern for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um. So after because here's the thing: like, all two users do prove an existential threat to the Japanese government. Because, because listen, they're lucky that Kazuma and Ryo at the end are just interested in their own little island. But like, you know, what happens to someone who's just as powerful but more ambitious? The sides, you know, is like, you know what? I kind of want to conquer and re reunify Japan. Yeah, one of the main reasons that they have wholly operating uh, is to ensure that there's no. Uh, is to provide a total blockade on the now Kanagawa Island. Uh, to ensure that nothing gets in, nothing gets out, except as prescribed by Holy, and that's one of the other reasons, like the that the outsiders and the, like the the places outside the city are doing so poorly, is because they have no access to the outside world. But the except for the city, I guess. Um, yes. So, how large is Kanagawa Prefecture? It's the second most populous uh, pre uh, prefecture of Japan. At uh, nine million people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so as you can imagine, and it's it, it's like uh, it's two thousand four hundred uh, square kilometers, uh, making it the yeah, I, fifth, fifth smallest. Yeah, yeah, it, it's reasonably small, and uh, but it uh, with a lot, a lot of people. So you can imagine that it's been a lot of issue. I mean, we don't... It sort of glosses over it, but I imagine there's actually been, like, a mass die-off or something uh, in the 20-year period since it's uh, broken away just out of, like, starvation. Yeah, yeah and survival of the fittest. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine most people left, maybe, I think. Um if, if they've allowed it. No, no. The impression I got is unless you join the city, there is no leaving for you. You are stuck here. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's why there's a satellite uh, which uh, I think monitors people from leaving. Yes. If they leave, they get attacked. Uh, yeah, because the they're saying like, they, can't, they can't risk the idea of what ones of these people carry on the gene for alter users or something like that, and they have an alter user out in the mainland that we can't control. That'd be fucking terrifying. Yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, some places looked pretty sparsely habited, though. Um, I, I yes, think... which, which goes to the idea of a lot, a lot of people have starved and died since then. Hmm. And a certain amount have just joined the city, which looks to be, like, fairly well populated, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, did did uh, Kyoji have have a reason to evacuate 
uh, the whole place, uh, like an evil reason. I think he did, right? Uh, um, I think he wanted well, to, he, to catch, he, he, catch he like enemy. set yeah he like set his whole thing up as well. One, he's trying to like do the will of the uh, uh, of like the mainland, so to an extent, or at least cooperate with them. So he didn't want to like just oh yeah, everyone in the city die because it was turning the city into his personal playground to deal with Ryuho and Kazuma. So, I mean, that's why. Hmm. Yeah, um, his motivations were basically... Uh, power. He's evil. Yeah. Uh, and He's I, evil, power... Envy. They maybe. want... They were not... A little bit of envy. The, the closest they get to, in terms of strong motivations for Mujo Kyoji is the fact that he was apparently grew up in a very, like, just barely scraping together uh, to feed himself, got kidnapped, refined, and now he finally has real power, and he sort of resents people like Yuho, who he sees as, like, he, Yuho's the uh, heir of a wealthy family, and so he was zen Actually, yeah. they actually um, have claims over the, the Lost Ground, like it's their own. Like, the Lost Ground was originally, like, part of their kind of, like, um, influence pie, I guess you could say. Like, they're a family that was, you know, have influence in that in that area before when it was part of Japan. Yeah, for, for all we know, they could be, like, uh, uh, samurai or daimyo that, uh, like, going back enough generations that controlled that part of Japan. So, do you guys think that the message of this show is uh, basically a racism bad or something? No, I think the 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 like I think the message for the show, and this is especially at the end because here's the thing: it's not like the lost ground doesn't want to rejoin back to, with Japan and be civilized, but it wants to do it on its own terms. And you even see that at the end, like at the end, where a lot of decent parts of the lost ground are full of flowers and houses and stuff like that. Like, here's the thing. They want to join the government, they want to rejoin Japan, but on their own terms. Uh, Not because they're being enforced or enslaved. Yeah, um, give me seconds. I'll be back, you guys talk. Yeah. Like, there is kind of like this natural law, reliance on yourself and community aspect. Especially to the ending, especially with the ending with, you know, Ryuho, Ryuho and Kazuma becoming basically the Lost Grounds wall to warlords basically mm -hmm. but yeah. did you, you get that you, did you get that impression like it, it's kind of like yeah we are gonna supplies but we're gonna do it on our own terms yes and they're very much being tired uh tired of being pushed around by outside actors who don't really have any stake in the lost ground and what happens to it and basically just see them as threats to be controlled. Yeah, like, you know, Ryuho says it when they're like, you know, when they're moving shit out and it's like, oh, yeah, thank you, mainland general, we'll bring in more troops and resources, and Ryuho and Kazuma shop and says like, no, you will no longer decide what the Lost Ground does, we will take our futures into our own hands and we'll civilize in our own time. And you get the impression that's what Kazuma and Ryuho are actually doing. Like, mm -hmm. they're civilizing the Lost Ground, because as long as they're there, um, you know, civilization and the lost ground, you know, rejoining the mainland will happen eventually. Like, give it a couple of generations, that will happen. But yeah. it will happen on their terms. Exactly. Uh, so, so the reason why I brought up the, the racism thing earlier is because uh, Snob compared it um, to, let's see, the the Edsman meets uh, Shaman King, essentially. Um, is this like the Edsman in any no. way? No. No. Why not? Hello. Well, I I guess one thing is like the X Men always tries to make it out as, for example, the X Men always tries to make it out like people are just irrational for hating mutants and they should be accepted and they're just like regular people and that's sort of like the moral message X Men usually tries to get off. What this gets off is that. Yeah, these people are different. These people, it does 
try and communicate Ryuho's vision, which is that these people are dangerous. These people all could, like, just take over society very easily. Of course you're not going to treat them exactly the same, and of course there's going to be a measure of caution and restraint, and that's uh, Ryuho's position at the start. And so that's sort of, like, fundamentally a different view of things. Uh, also, than... yeah, and also in, like, the Shaman King case as well, it's also, in sh like, in Shaman King, it isn't racism bad, it's tradition versus innovation. Because these shamans kind of represent, like, aspects of that, of what humanity has kind of lost, like, this connection to the world that cannot be seen, you know, through mortal eyes. Because, um... Shaman King's quite interesting where it kind of talks about how, like, humanity in a way has devolved in certain ways, like, you know, they're disrespecting nature, they no longer work in tandem with nature, and wanton greed and destruction is, is cutting them off from, like, you know, the great spirit, the life force that fuels all. Like, it's not just racism bad, it's more like, yeah, humanity, we've become, like, technolog technologically advanced and all, but look what we're losing. We're, you know, we're losing this, 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 the spiritual aspect of ourselves to materialism. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, it's more like, uh, look at my fist. <laughs> um, I guess, when it comes to Kazuma, anyway. Um, yeah, until he gets yeah. the full suit of armor. Yeah. And what you have when you... When the time skip comes back, well, when the time skip ends, we're reintroduced... Both Kazuma and Ryuho have have amnesia from their uh, exposure to the other side. They've lost their memories, and they're just sort of wandering. Uh, has Kazuma and... lost his memories as well, or was it just Ryo? No, I think Kazuma did as well for a while. I could be wrong. Uh, what do you think about that, Biogundam? I, I think he I think he did for a bit, but that but I like I think for a bit he did, but then he just got kind of like stuck in a funk. Mm-hmm. That's true too. Because That's that, definitely the impression I got was that um, after Kimishima's death, uh, Kazuma didn't want to didn't want to get involved, uh, um, didn't want to get uh, the little girl or whatever. What, what, what. No, he did not, and, and he also like. That's a, a becomes a thing, running thing with. Oh, him. Okay, Keenon, can you like fuck off, please? We're trying to have a discussion. It's. Mm. Yeah. Um... Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, come on, Keenon. Uh, okay. Um. This is. <laughs> Where does he even get this soup? Anyways, uh, yeah, he, Kazuma definitely has a running thing where, yeah, <laughs> well, where, where he doesn't want the responsibility anymore. He doesn't want the responsibility of looking after. Let me get a name for once. Economy. He doesn't want the responsibility of looking after economy or anyone anymore. He feels like it's just crushing all those responsibilities. And so he just sort of resigns himself to this life as a cage fighter. Uh, and Yeah, and he, and he gets really stuck in this funk. And it's like, and even the, when, the, when the characters find him again, he's like, Kazuma, what the fuck is wrong with you? you this is not like you. Because, because like, because here's the thing with Kazuma is that he's now denying the call. Yes. Is, like, there, specifically, like, there's this one character, Asuka Tachibana, who, he... Uh, he like join. He's like a holy member who like fought Kazuma a bit. They both got trapped uh, in this big cave, and they had to team up uh, in, in order to fight their way out and find their way out. And the both of them developed like a mutual respect for one another. And uh, Tachibana was like immediately thrown out of holy afterwards for like failing in his job of bringing in, uh, bringing in uh, Kazuma, and, and so uh, since then, like Tachibana has sort of been like wandering the outside a bit, and he's helping out Mimori in terms of like helping things out for the outsiders. 
Mm. Yeah. I, I, I actually quite like Tachibana. He's actually kind of an interesting character. He's just like, oh, okay. You know, like, you know, he he, he bought the Kool-Aid for a little bit, and then, um, you know, he realizes, like, ha, huh, maybe there is more to life in Holy. Yeah. And meanwhile, Yuho, I, I think it's all, he just sort of, he's this wandering man in a cloak. He happens upon this village. And when you, he comes across these people that are just like obviously abusing and terrorizing the farmers that they're having working under him. And yeah, a sense of justice kicks in. He immediately starts going at them. He's he starts saying, like, basically, like call it says. Like in much more verbose words, like calls them poisonous insects, stuff like that, and he he just comes in and proclaims like by absolute right, what you're doing here is immoral, and I will judge you all, and you will all be judged, and it's. It's a huge change for him. It, it, it's this. It's it's a really great scene because you you thus he's although he's talked like in this manner beforehand, he's always talked on it, about it in terms of you've disobeyed holy, you've disobeyed the rules of holy. This is the first time in the whole show where he's talked about no. You've contravened more laws. You deserve judgment for that. Yeah, and this is where the lawful good paladin aspect comes in with, like, in this character development. Because before, he was lawful neutral, border on lawful evil. Because here's the thing the lawful neutral guy will probably never help the Rebel Alliance. And, like, here's the thing the only time the ne lawful neutral guy would ever help the Rebel Alliance is that he'd be doing shit behind the scenes that they would never know. And when the new regime comes in, you know, he'll fulfill his role like he always did. Uh, the lawful like evil guy... Maybe. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, the lawful neutral guy is that. Like, basically, he'll be behind the scenes doing shit, but he'll work within the limits of the law. But no, this is... This is Ryuho as Paladin Justice Man. Like, he he is justice now. He is going to embody these virtues of civilization and how dare you abuse these villagers who are trying to eke out existence, who are trying to build civilization. This is beyond cruel. I am going to put a stop to this and restore order. And, like, because here's the thing of lawful good. It's about benevolence. It's about the benevolence of civilization and community and all that shit. I kind of got the feeling that um, he became... Um... Like uh, that, he used to look more at the bigger picture, and but now, yes. it's, um, he's more it's smaller, smaller. Because even at, like when he saves the villagers, he's like, "Listen, I will protect them." And when Ho and I guess Heraclius will bring in this too. When Holy comes back, he walks out and says, "Like, oh, there's a village here, and I will protect these people with my life. And if you force me, I will kill you." Yes, that's something a paladin upset. would do. That is something a paladin would do, like in D and D, <laughs> like a paladin in in setting. A paladin can literally turn around and say, like, you know, if you get in the way of my pursuit of justice, I will dro I will drop you. Yeah, and it's also at this point that he develops... Because a lawful good is not lawful nice. And, and it's also at this point that he develops a close relationship with Konami, uh, the, the girl that Kazuma always looked after. The little girl. Uh, and uh, Konami is, like, a very nice, sweet, understanding person. So she immediately like relates to uh, Yuho and sort of understands him mm. and, and where he's coming from. And when when Holy shows up, of course, the uh, Sherris happens to be like one of the first ones to show up, and she is like totally shocked and floored. Like Yuho, he's fucking alive and he's lost all his memories uh and and so she pulls him aside and uh start explaining themselves <laughs> there, there's actually a scene uh, there's a nice little bit i like where where sharers briefly tells yuho that they're lovers oh yeah that seems and, right and, and there's and there'd been like enough 
they hadn't shown enough details that that was like at least semi plausible. But then she reveals a a few minute a few minutes later that she was just screwing with him and it was a one sided crush, <laughs> and and she was trying to like. <laughs> Wheel him in because she was like so sorrowful and really wanted to get close to him again. I mean, not not even a few minutes uh, later. It was like immediately after, almost I guess. Like uh, after he saw, after she saw his reaction. Or, um, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Um. So if you look at the thumbnail, um, which you shows uh, Bogandam, uh, we can see that uh, Kazuma has one eye closed. Was he like that? Uh, from the start, or is that... Uh... Uh, no, that happened because... Um, ba- basically, so the second form was Alter, Shell Bullet, or Shining Bullet, or whatever the fuck you call it. Um, it like it does a thing over his eye, and I think during the battle with Kazuma... Oh, no, no, sorry, battle with Ryoho, um, he got, like, badly wounded, and basically his eye's kind of a bit fucked up. Um, mm-hmm. He can open it when he activates his Alter powers, but you get the impression that, like, the second form... Up until he unlocks the third form... Um, you get the impression the second form really hurts him to use. Yeah, it's like completely drained him, and so he just can't use that eye anymore. Yeah, so so, so basically the way that uh, Ryo uh, levels up and the way that uh, Kazuma level up are different. And yeah, they, they they make it clear that for like any alter user, and this is Kazuma included, you use it too much, you will end up dying. Because I don't. I mean, I think uh, Rio uh, ended up with having. A, I, mean, I mean, a great. Ex- I mean, a great example of this is like you know when he when he uses that second bullet power again. You notice the thing of where his arm transforms into it, but later on to the show, like literally, his arm literally just disappears, disintegrates, and the second form just takes over. Like unlike the first form, where like it transformed and overlaid over his arm. No, the sec- like in the second half. Like basically, his organic arm disappears, and the new and the second form like just reappears attached to it. Yeah, there's there's some nice uh, sound effects as well, like when stuff. Yeah, like you, basically, you get the impression that like the power that he got that second form, it's like he wasn't supposed to get it, or it's like it's slowly killing him. Like yes. you, you, or yeah, you get the impression that that power that he has, he can't handle it. Like his body can't handle it. Whereas, whereas, whereas with, with Rio, uh, he was meant to have that power anyway, and he's just he's just expanding to his natural power limit. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, Kazuma does get over this, but like when he gets Shine Bullet for the first time, you know, you get the impression that he wasn't supposed to have that power at that time. Mm. Mm-hmm. Which is but why, anyways. which is why it's, which is why it's killing him. Yeah, exactly. I think by the end, like uh, there's a gap in the middle of his uh, fist, uh, or maybe I'm mis- like, uh, uh, like, like there's a, bl- a black spot where, where there's nothing on his hand. Uh, I don't know if you remember, or maybe if I'm imagining it uh, on his fist. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think he does have like those sort of bruises or black spots or something when he's not using. I mean, the I power. do know, I do know he's got like these weird techno lines on his fist when he's no longer. When, even when he doesn't use that power, even when he's not summoning his altar. So you get the impression that you know his constant altar power use is affecting him in some way. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's explained, uh, or, or rather, like. So, so the the, the reason why uh, Rio, Rio is so powerful is because he was chosen by that thing. The uh, no, he was just naturally gifted. Like yeah. he was just kind of naturally gifted. Uh, but didn't they say that uh, uh, the, the reason why his parents died is because of him? Because uh, uh, he was being sought after uh, because his body was yeah. Because that that altar was looking that altar was looking for a user. Yeah. That could help him, and you know, Riho was like the strongest thing that he could find at the time. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah, and I think it might have like killed his. Pa- I think it might have like killed his parents just because it, it, it's like weird and from an alternate dimension and doesn't know what it's doing. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, like basically, it was like, oh, there's a powerful to use a teleport. Oh, fuck, everything's dead. Oh well, you know, like. Like, it's, it, I don't think it's a, it, like, you get the impression it, it didn't do it maliciously, it was just like, it was seeking out someone with that power, and Ryoho happened to be the one it felt. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's one of those things where it looks like a malevolent entity, but it's really not. It's just sort of a neutral entity. By the way, it was so. So basically, the, the place that, that it was found was in the forest. Uh, the what, what I can't remember the exact name, but uh, so there's there's a forest where the a- animals have alter powers. Yes, um, and uh, it, it was kind of weird that Holly was not aware of it, but. Uh, um, well, yeah, yeah. I think that's just to show that Holy is like a very regional and out of touch. Doesn't out of touch. Doesn't really understand things very well. Yeah, and and, and why wasn't Alien uh, able to find Kazuma wherever he was with his absolute perception? Um, well, I mean, to be fair, he's relying upon like usually like outside views, he probably like satellites plus being able to see people from far away. He probably didn't see this guy who was like locked up in a basement and fighting for cage matches. I can tell you when it comes to Ryuho. Yeah, exactly. Why wasn't uh, he um yeah. Because I think that was before uh, Kyojo, whatever, the, the, bad, the other bad guy, Kyoji, Mujo, showed up. Kyoji, yeah. Kyoji, whatever, yeah. Before he showed up, so Alien, Alien could still uh, still use his power to lo- locate people. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe there's a limit or something, who knows. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. yeah, anyways. Uh, Kazuma ends up like trying to leave the... Uh, leave the uh, lost ground entirely via like a like, counterfeit like uh, airplane ticket and stuff like that, and he's nearly there, but he gets trapped by like Mujo Kyoji's uh, little goon, who turns out to be Ayase, one of the uh, women who like he saved uh, a number of episodes previous. Kazuma saved. Uh, ISA's, like, little brother in, like, this really reckless uh, manner. And so she developed, like, a little bit of a crush and admiration for him. And she ended up getting totally kidnapped uh, by the uh, by the holy to get refined on the mainland. And it was actually a really big uh, scene that, that showed, like, consequences are serious in this show where you expect Kazuma is going to save them all at the last minute, but no. He fails. And she's returned. She has these water powers and she's like completely doing their bidding. Uh, there's like a whole episode where they fight and uh, of course she ultimately ends up dying. She was doing this all to like keep her brother safe uh, who was also getting refined, but no. Her brother dies, and so she immediately has nothing left to live for, and ends up uh, dying just from overuse of her power, and sort of like a deathbed confession to Kazuma. And for Kazuma, that's like one more reason to fucking hate everyone from the mainland and what they're doing. Uh, by the way, um, was Kyoji going against a little bit um, the mainland with his... Ye- Yes, I think that much is clear. He he was supported. He was supposed to come in and put things in order, but he wasn't supposed to like <laughs> try and attain the powers of God for himself. And that's clearly what he was trying to do. He was trying to attain those powers for himself and really get to uh, that guy who's the source of the altar powers. And as a result, he goes, yeah. And one of the things he also does is he ends up kidnapping Konami. And there's this big reveal that, oh, you, you, you thought Konami was just this normal girl? You thought she wasn't an alternate user? How naive you all were. So it turns out she'd always been a very kind, understanding character. Well, it turns out her alter power is actually just understanding people's mindsets and emotions entirely. 
And so Mujo Kyoji like takes that into his Tower Citadel of Evil, and he starts using that uh, in order to like hooks it up to machine and uses it to start predicting everything that these people are going to do, etc. Yeah. Um, so I guess um, kind of related to Konami. Um, not exactly, but uh, who who is best girl? Uh, let's start with you, uh, Barugandam. Um, I kind of like ISA or Kaname. It's kind of like a toss-up between the two of them. I see. Hmm. Um, also, I am I am getting tired, so I'm probably going to drop out in like five minutes. But um, got, got, got it. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I just want to say, uh, sorry, I lost my call there, but I'm. Um, it's late, and I and I just got really fucking annoyed. Hmm. Because of a certain someone, I guess. Um, I imagine. Um, so, uh, w- what about you, Heraclius? I guess Sheris or Mimoy, they're not like a big uh, staple of it. One of the weird and I guess semi-interesting things they do is they sort of set up Konami as like a future love interest with Kazuma, where, like, the final epilogue shows, like, a couple years later, and she's, like, almost of age. She's probably, like, 13, 14 at that point. And and at that point, she's, like, full romantically interested in Kazuma. Uh, It's something I've seen before in anime, where you've got, like, this younger character who like looks up to the main character and like slowly grows up and then becomes romantically attracted to him even if it's one of those things you wouldn't see in something western uh just because people would get weirded out for me it's a little weird and odd but i guess there's not nothing necessarily wrong with it yeah i I mean in this show it doesn't come off it doesn't come off as creepy no, it doesn't. Especially because it's, uh, it does come across a bit like they are, they are basically family, uh, and so I guess you could say it's a natural evolution. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. um. So, uh, I guess, uh, yeah. Um, we didn't talk that much about uh, Sherry's. I guess. Um, I get. I. I, think, I mean. Yeah. There's not much. Correct me if I'm wrong, Bio Gundam, but I don't think there's much to talk about her. No. No. At the end of the day, she is the kind of cute one who's uh, who's in the corner looking after uh, Ryuho while he broods and ignores her. Uh, she she comes more into the fore. Uh, she's a little flirty. Uh, she she comes more into the show in the second half where she starts like trying to sacrifice for Yuho in all these ways. She's openly jealous of uh, Mimori, who also has a thing for Yuho, uh, the, the childhood friend of Yuho. And she she really idolizes him for like the reasons we laid out of he apparently saved her life way back in the day. Uh, which culminates in this scene. It's a good scene, but it was kind of obviously telegraphed, where you knew that Sheris had like some super weak uh, situational alter power. Well, she you well Yuho just like fucking dies uh, in one of these near final battles. So Sheris literally uses her alter power to give up her life energy to. Uh, to bring Ryuho back to life. Yeah, basically uh, re- restart as in, like restart him basically. Yeah, and, and Sheris just like fucking disappears. There's nothing left but like her little hairband, and that Ryuho sees that, and that causes him to go totally ape shit. He is like totally angry at Mujo Kyoji and everything he's done is like just another thing taken from me. He's like Kazuma. It's just one more thing taken from me by these people. God, how dare they? 
Hmm. Oh yeah, we also f- we we should also mention the scene where like the guy tried to like bl- like kidnap his his father, and his father like basically killed himself because he didn't want to be a burden to his son who has yeah. become a real man. Yes. Did yeah. The- there, there's even a scene earlier where, uh, where uh, Martin goes like to the father of Yuho and says, "Look, he's rebel now. Do you, do you want to do like anything to come in and convince him or bring him in or whatever?" And he says, "Like, no. Yuho's walking his own path. All, all I wish for him is the best, and I don't want to get involved." So, uh, did uh, so Kyoji did uh, quite a. Uh, quite a few things to uh, Ryo, but uh, did he do anything to Kazuma to make Kazuma hate him? Yeah, he would find Ayase and turn to loose against him. Oh, yeah, yeah, they they do say that it was uh, him. Yeah, um, like, corrupted people that he knew into slaves and puppets, and and here's the thing, he couldn't save them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why Cosmo is just apeshit. Plus the fact that he's kidnapped Konami uh, as like using him for his master planner tower of doom that that lets him uh, predict everyone else's movements. Um. By the way, is uh, holy an ab- an abbreviation for something or like? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be, but it's probably something nonsensical. I'm sure the scry and wiki is going to tell me. I see, I see. Maybe. The wiki's pretty fucking loose. Um... Oh. What else? Holy... No, they don't say anything. I just always assume that it... Yeah, that. but it's a pretty bare-bones wiki. Uh, it might be, maybe if I, like, zoomed in on the opening, there seemed to be some text under holy, so I just assume... That there is. It stands for something. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Especially because, like, they're like, uh, their non ultra battalions are like called hold, H O L D, like all capitals. Yeah. Is- um, you know, it, it, it's government bureaucrats. We've got to give the, all these things names. Um, so, so aside from being the main guy and basically going ape shit and destroying the, the Tower of Doom, um, next couple of episodes get really interesting because basically they're just kicking off, um, because that kicks off the, they're kicking out the, the foreigners off the island and then starts the military invasions. And there's a really interesting scene, and I know we're skipping shit, but I'm going to bounce in a few minutes. Like, there's a really interesting scene where the military guys after the NDS invasion are like, oh, you know, one invasion failed, but, you know, we'll get them next time. We'll get them next time. We're just going to play a long game. Yes. And... And, and, and I think it's kind of interesting that you have these guys, like, they they don't give a fuck how much they have to sacrifice. They're just like, yeah, we will one day bring this damn band of natural order rebels un- in- into compliance and into the bureaucracy for their own good. I would have thought that they would be more scared, but uh, they seemed surprisingly calm, so they must have um, mm-hmm. something. Uh, I, I don't know. I think the manga ends uh, the same as the anime, right, you said, so maybe not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and... um. I mean, I mean, the only like, thing we can probably talk about because I need to draw is probably like the final battle. Yeah, um, the, between the Kazuma fight... and Riho, which I, I'm just going to say this well, now. Well, we um, didn't that was talk... a good. Oh yeah, that was a good final battle. We didn't talk about how they beat Mujo Kyoji. I mean, they beat Mujo Kyoji. As we said, he's not a likable villain. Uh, he. He has this, maybe it's just the voice acting, but even though he does all these horrible, evil things and objectively uh, does all these things, he comes across as kind of pathetic and a feat just in his mannerisms. And as a result... Yeah, he comes off as, he, he comes off as very... Oh, what's the word? He comes off as quite, like, effeminate. Yes. And- there's a very interesting thing. So the interesting thing about and the interesting thing about this, you look at like Ryoho and Kyoji. Um, these dudes are actually quite tall. Like, uh, no, not not uh, no, not Kyoji. It's um, K- uh, Kazuma and Ryoho. Kazuma, like Kazuma and Ryoho, Ry- Ryoho. Um, they're like fucking six foot or like five eleven, eight like tall. Like there is no manlets in this cast. Mm-hmm. Like straight cougars, like six two. Yeah. 
maybe. What about Kyoji? Is he a short guy as well? Um, let me check. Uh, characters, main cast. Um, yeah, yeah, is I... the thing they mentioned on Wiki. I'm like, wait, Ryuho's like six feet tall. Yeah, I, I don't. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see any mention of uh, height for him. But yeah, he ends up. They end up beating him. They rescue Konami. Uh, Kazuma and Ryuho have this really nice final fight where basically both Konami and uh, well, Mimoy are going, why on earth are you two doing this? And I think one of them says to the other, no, they have to do this with one another. This is their way of resolving their... Yeah, economy. They, this is their way of resolving their differences. They have to have this fight for the finish. And it's actually kind of tense because you know that these Ultra Powers put a strain on them. So it's theoretically possible that like in this fight just for their own honor, that they could end up dying from exertion. Uh, and they, go, and they like, go all out like they go first form, second form, and then third form, and the energy spiking up, and it's getting more tense. And they're like, "Yeah, they're gonna duke it out." Like, the, you know, and, and, and there, it is quite tense because you think is one of them gonna die because they're not gonna hold back. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's actually much more tense at the end when their powers have, have run out and it becomes a, a fist fight. Oh yeah, and, and it becomes like this. Yeah, they have just this fist fight where they're beating the crap out of each other and and, and they're both bleeding like hell. It, it, it's very fun and, and I it was really a good touch to end their battle that way. Yeah. But and in, in what, what end, I really like and what I really like about it is at the end is that when they both fall down, you see one hand raised, but you don't know whose hand it is. Hmm. I think it looked it looked like uh, Kazuma's it hand to me. Yeah, it looked like Kazuma's hand to me too. Because he did that I, thing with his fingers, so, you know. Yeah, I, I yeah, but I, I do, yeah, like I'm, I, I do believe that it's probably Kazuma that wins. But I like the idea they wanted to keep it like a little ambiguous, like you know, that, yeah, who won the fun. fight. Yeah, that would have been fun. Um, so I, I guess. But yeah, I, I, I basically like you can infer like that's the thing I go through that Kazuma ultimately won the fight, but. Yo, know, it's it's cool they went for a bit like the ambiguity. It's like you see a hand raised up and you don't know who it is. Yeah, you know, it kinda of leads like, oh, who did win? Who did win the final battle? Yeah, and uh did any did either of them die? Um I don't think uh well, I don't think that either of them died though. No, they, they basically become the new warlords. That's what we see in the flat flash forward. I see, I see. So, yeah, there's the the ED plays, and then they have, like, a two-minute epilogue, and that's the end of the show. Oh, yeah, and Stray Cougar dies as well. Yeah. During Stray the battle. Cougar. Yeah, uh, a, a nice scene where he, he like, uh, gives some advice to some children and then just sort of expires in his chair. Was it advice, or, or was, wasn't it more like him boasting about... Uh... Uh, being, uh, he did give some advice as well, I think. Um, but uh, he was kind of boasting about uh, being friends uh, with those two guys. Uh, five oh, of years, course. So. Um, and of I course, naturally. Uh, yeah, I think at the end he says something like um, to Rio uh, that he hoped that um, you know he would go and see Mimori sometime. Uh, as well, <laughs> which mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, basically telling him, hey, hey. Stop treating your women like shit. Stop ignoring them. <laughs> mm, maybe, and uh, <laughs> maybe not so forcefully, but yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, I guess um, it's time for scores. Um. I'll I'll give the show a light seven out of ten. A, a light seven out of ten. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. Is it mostly because of the an animation uh, pro issues? Uh, mostly the animation and the ending villain is kind of meh. And yeah. like some of the characters aren't as fleshed out or you know, has much character development. But like the main conflict, like the main shit about it, is pretty decent for what it is. Oh yeah, Th this is a very strong show. I give it a strong 7 out of 10. Uh, I agree that there's some 
animation issues at the start, which makes it hard to get into. And also, it's one of those, like, you don't, it's like, it's another draft away from being a masterpiece, essentially. It's a very good show, but the, but like, side characters are just sort of there and don't have a complete fullness to them. Characters like Mimoy are kind of just there and two-dimensional. Um, a little more polishing, and this would be like a complete masterpiece that would be remembered to this day. As is, it's a strong 7 out of 10, which I would still recommend for anyone to watch. But it's easier to see why this is a show that's... It was semi-popular at the time, but it's kind of mostly been forgotten about. But I've still seen a couple YouTube videos that were posted up recently about it. So it's not like it's entirely forgotten. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would also give it a strong 7 out of 10. Um, um, I would say that after the first half, um, you know, especially when the characters got amnesia, um, it kind of slowed down. But, uh, it's, it yeah. definitely did. And um, but, but had, and uh, as Biogandam said, the, uh, the final villain was not that good. Um, the fist fight at the end though was pretty good, and it reminded me of um, the Garan Lagan uh, movie um, ending. Yeah, it has a lot of like that manliness and that epic fighting spirit. Like, like watching that shit, like watch that shit again, got me pumped. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, do it, yeah. Um, um, and um, so at, at the end of the Garan Lagan movie uh, ending, because the, the movie ending of Garan Lagan is different from the TV series a little bit, but basically, like, it becomes, uh, uh, a, like, the, the, it becomes like a fist fight between, um, um, what, what's his name? Um, God damn it. Uh, um, anyway, the protagonist in uh, Garan Lagan and uh, the Antimatter, you know, they're, they're, they're fight, fight, they were fighting on huge scale, but then uh, it ends um, you know, with, with a fist fight, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, Based. Yeah, because, uh, and I think it, um, th this kind of suits, um, is, and he, he, here as well, like, they start with, uh, with a huge uh, battle with superpowers, and then they're pu punching each other in a fight. Um, and I think th this basically suits more, um, more Kazuma, because for, for Kazuma, it's, it's a, like, it's a fight, uh, and for, for, whereas for, um, Rio, it's more more of a battle or something, uh, grander like that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I I, I I mean a great example, like a great way to portray it, and like Hercules will get this thing. He's like Basra from Macross Seven, except he 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 communicates with his fists. Yes. D did you think it was a bit silly though that um, they would basically say the same thing at like? Like right one after the other at the same time. Um, did he, oh. What have they called out their attacks? You mean? No, no. Like sometimes, like um, they would say either either the same thing or very similar things right after the other. Um, no, that that was clearly an overlap to show that that they were fundamentally like similar in a few ways, and it was like. There was always like a slight difference between them because like Yuho's version was always more about I'm going to judge you, uh, whereas uh, Kazuma's version was always more about I'm going to break you, and I liked that. I, 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 it was I thought it was really dramatic and it I mean, showed like and it, it, it also like you know like all good anime rivalries you know they're going to have some similarities but you know it's where they differentiate. I mean. I mean, at, at and, the end of the yeah, go on. Sorry. Yeah, I would, I'd say this is a pretty good like anime rivalry. Like, it's decent, it's fleshed out, and it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's sure. an excellent anime rivalry, I'd say. I would. Yeah, yeah I would say though that um, during the second half, after Rio's character became um, development. Yeah, development. He became a lot m more like. Uh, a lot more like Kazuma. I wouldn't say that they were exactly the same, but uh, 
um, the differences. Their motivations, that, their motivations are different. I mean, yes. I mean, like, like there is the end result will be the same, but their motivation, how they get there, going to be different. But, yeah. Basically, yeah. Like, yeah. Go on. Sorry. Yeah, Ka Kazuma's view is that you're getting in my way. I'm going to crush you. I'm going to pulverize you. You're you're threatening people I love. I'm going to pulverize you. Uh, uh, whereas Rihu's view is you're threatening people. I judge you. I judge you for the actions you have committed. But in the end, either way, uh, if you're against one of them, either one of them, you're just going to end up uh, beaten up. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Yes. Welcome. Welcome to natural law and and pro at natural law and action. Okay. The the natural elite scoffs at the bureaucracy and yawns at laws. They yes. make their own laws. Yes, and that is definitely one of the more fun things about this show is that you you get to see Kazuma just chafing against. Uh, th this completely corrupt system, uh, and eventually uh, Yuho joins him and gets to do the exact same thing, and that's really fun. Yeah. Um, I think uh, th that's all there is to say about uh, Scryad. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. You can end the recording, and all right. Uh, yeah, Scryad is a good show. You should watch it. You know, it's a, it's a bit rough around the edges, but there there is... As Heracula said, like, this is one or two more drafts away from being an absolute masterpiece of a show. And, you know, I hope that, you know, you know, I hope these podcasts, you know, I hope I can recommend more, you know, kind of niche shows to people, you know, through this podcast. Because, you know, there's there's a lot of good anime out there. You know, you just have to shift through all the bullshit to get to it. Yeah, much better than just complaining about, like, uh, seasonal anime or whatever all the time. Um, yeah. So, um, Heraclius, what about you? Any final thoughts or things you think uh, we missed? Uh, yeah, overall, this is a... I, I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was a good show. Uh, yeah, I, I don't... You'll enjoy the conflict if you like sort of that type of character like Kazuma, who's like just a rebel against the system. And I think if you like those types of narratives where you do have this rebel against not an unjust system, but also a guy who just like sort of enjoys rebelling for the fun of it. I think if you enjoy that type of character and that kind of narrative to an extent, I think you'll really enjoy this show. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, I also agree. I think, um, yeah, I think it was more interesting in the first half again because, like, it kind of felt like both sides had a point in the conflict. Yes. Um, like, uh, Holy uh, and even the commander, even though he knew that people were sent for human experimentation, he knew that if he didn't yeah. comply with uh, the mainland, uh, then they would basically be persecuted. Um, yeah, the, yeah, then things yeah, they, 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 they actually, we did. We, we actually did forget that. I, I think we should mention the commander too. You get the impression that the commander is he he is Machiavellian in the sense of like he's he's doing this shit because if he doesn't it it's going to get a lot worse for both him and the native altar users like because yeah. he, he like cuz I I I get the impression that he doesn't want to really do this deep down he doesn't want to do this but he doesn't have a choice he's in this position where if he doesn't if he, it's either he does this himself or someone else does it and it becomes way worse Exactly. And you kind of get the impression that, like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, but yeah, you kind of get the impression that the commander is a bit more of a grayer character. Like, yeah, he has these aspects where he's like, you know, I'm going to control, you know, the lost ground, I'm going to tame it all. But you get the impression that he's doing it for more benevolent purposes. He's definitely a man of integrity. Like, he give when Mimoy asks for, like, all the info, he, on on what's going on with the refining, he gives it to her. Yeah. He, hoping that, in his view, she'll re remain reasonable. And, of course, she she's yeah. not. I mean, he, he basically calls... Yeah, because as, as far as he's concerned, like, he's thinking about the bigger picture, and when Kazuma and Ryoho basically calls for an impact, he's like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Yeah, exactly. Um, he, um, whereas like uh, from Kazuma's perspective, it's more like uh, if there's a wall, uh, I'm just going to 
a break it with, with my fist. <laughs> oh, 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 honestly, the commander kind of comes off as like he's the he's the necessary evil in the conflict. Yeah, um, <clears throat> he thinks uh, more than uh, um, yeah, yeah. But basically, he's willing to be uh, to do evil things for uh, good ends. Uh, which I mean, there are many characters like that, but you, you get the point. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, and with that yeah. said, um, I think uh, let's end the show here. Yeah, let's end it. Yeah, let's end it.